Applying to university is really tricky when it comes to calculating your APS score or your application score point system. Basically what it is is a set of numbers that indicates whether or not you are able to even enter into that degree. And let me tell you something, it's really confusing because every single university has a different system and I'm here to make it super simple for you to understand how to calculate your APS score for your university application. Welcome back everybody to Miss Angler's biology class. I am Miss Angler. Now in today's video we are going to be looking at how to calculate your APS score or your APS points for your university application. This is the second video in the series and I'm going to be making many more of these explaining everything about university, how to apply, and then once you've applied, what do you do next? Do you get a bursary? Um, how do you pay for your textbooks? Everything will be covered. Now, don't forget to leave some questions down below in the comment section if you want to know anything about university or if there is a burning topic that you want me to cover in your journey through your university life. First and foremost, when you are going to look at a degree, you actually need to start with looking at the subject requirements. Now, subject requirements means you have to have certain subjects in matric in order to even qualify to do this. So even if you have the right point number, it doesn't matter if you haven't taken the correct subjects. Most often, the subjects that keep you from getting into a degree are mathematics and physical sciences and that's because they're kind of like the gateway subject if you do those two subjects you can get into any degree pretty much okay unless it's a specific like a specific specialized degree maybe something like music where you would also have need to have done you know music but other than that these are the two main subjects that ensure that you can get into any degree. If you don't have these two subjects, it does limit what you can go into, but don't worry! I'm also going to do a whole video on what you can apply if you don't take maths and physics as well. Now, once you have established what subjects you need for your degree, you now need to look at the total um, subject percentage that you have for your subjects currently. So essentially what you're going to do is take your grade 11 final term 4 report and you are going to look at the very last mark. In other words, not your term 4 mark, you are going to look at your final year mark for the subject. Now, here is some important pieces of information about the subjects that you can and cannot include. When we calculate your points, we are going to look at your six best subjects. So technically to matriculate, you have seven subjects. So I just want you to know something. The seven subject being LO often is not included in your APS score. Some universities do allow you to use it, but I will tell you which of those shortly, but it's very few and far between. So you cannot rely on LO to get you into university. Now let's get back to those top six subjects. What's interesting about that is that if you are somebody who does an eighth or even a ninth subject, you can now decide of the basket of subjects you have, which is your best six. And a sneaky little thing that some people do is that especially if they they know they're not good at one of the, the standard six, like they've got maths, English, Afrikaans, and then their three choice subjects. Sometimes what people do is they take an eighth or a ninth subject in order to make up for any of the other compulsory subjects they might not do well in. For example, let's say you don't do well in Afrikaans. Some people take an eighth subject so that they don't have to include Afrikaans in their calculations. They can use any of their subjects other than LO to calculate their APS. So if they have an eighth subject that they're getting 80% in compared to getting 40% in Afrikaans, that counts for your APS score. You don't have to include that really low score, but of course, that comes with a price. The price is you would have to take an extra subject. 
Now, when it comes to converting your percentages into points, this little table alongside is the simplest way it can be done. But I also want to point out that some universities do this differently. They actually give you extra points. But let's start off with the basics here. If you are getting, for example, 90 to 100 percent, that counts for seven points points. If you're getting 80 to 89, that's six points and so on and so forth. And so what you need to do is look at your term four total percentages for your six subjects, remember, not including LO, and you add those together and that will give you your APS. And that is the points, the minimum, may I add, points that you need in order to apply for that degree. Now, a university like WITS, on the other hand, does something slightly different. And that's why you will have to go to individual universities' websites to just see how they might change up their university point system. And I'll include another one now as well that's slightly different. WITS actually gives you extra points for mathematics and English. So if you're getting a five, they will give you like an extra point or two depending on how high up you got. And so basically what that means is for a place like Wits, your English and your maths marks count more than the others. In other words, you get bonus marks as well, which is great. And that encourages you to do really well in your maths and English. Then let's look at UCT. Now, UCT is slightly different. They don't calculate your APS points in a conversion like we did earlier, where if you got 90%, you get seven points. What UCT does is they simply ask you to add all your percentages together, and then you get like a big grand total. And I think the reason why they do that is because they want to be able to tell the difference between someone who got 70 and someone who got 75. They want to make sure that the person who got 75 did get that extra five points um, because there's so many applicants as well to UCT that I think they're using it as a way to reduce um, the amount of people that can actually apply for something as well. Now, once again, I have included a list alongside of the top 10 universities in South Africa and their APS point system and any other requirements they may need. Some even require certain proficiencies in languages, for example, English, and that will also be calculated in your um, application. If you want to pause the video now to see any of these as we roll through, of course, you can do that. One other thing that we must take into consideration, and I will be doing a follow-up video on that, which you might notice as you go through it, is you need to also prepare yourself for the NBTs or the National Benchmark Tests. This is another thing that you would need to do in order to apply for your degree, but we'll get to that later because that's after you have applied. One last thing about the APS score when it comes to applying to university is some schools have a disadvantage factor. So what is a disadvantage factor? That is linked to your household income. So for example, if your household income is lower than a certain amount, you get extra disadvantage points added to your application. If you are a previously disadvantaged person from apartheid era, you also get a different disadvantage point added to your application and the whole purpose of the disadvantage point system is to improve the application process to universities in South Africa and to right the wrongs of the apartheid system ensuring that more people have access to tertiary education that might not have before. For example, if your household is below a minimum income, I think the minimum income is 350,000 Brand, and your parents have never gone to university themselves, all of these things stand in your favor um, as a way of calculating um, what are the chances of you getting into university and then also breaking the cycle of apartheid or breaking the cycle of poverty as well um, to ensure that even though you might come from a low income background, you still had the ability and access to tertiary level education. Now that's how you are going to calculate your APS score. Now if you're worried because currently your APS score is below what you need in terms of the minimum, don't panic. 
still apply for the degree that you want to get in. You may be waitlisted and then what happens sometimes is that if you do get in and you were below the threshold, they offer these kind of short-term semester bridging courses where it's like six months where you need to do an extra bit of maths or an extra bit of biology or it might even be um, computer literacy or English literacy and they just do that to ensure that you are proficient enough before you um, progress in the degree. That's something to keep in mind, so don't panic. But that's also why you must apply to a variety of degrees that may have slightly lower APS scores because you're more likely to get in. Remember, the APS score is there to separate you from everyone who can get that, that score and who can't. The last thing I will say about these scores is that just because you make the minimum amount doesn't mean you will get in. And that's something that's really hard for people to hear, especially when the APS scores are really high to get in in the first place. Just because you get the minimum amount doesn't mean that they won't reject you. What they often do is they see how many have applied to the degree and they look at the top portion first, and then it, they will see, well, we can offer 100 spaces. 70 of the spaces are already allocated to people who got more than 50 points. So let's say, for example, the application minimum was 48, and you got 48. They will look at everyone maybe that got 50 and more, and they'll take them in first. Then they will look at how many positions do we have open, and we will then fill up the last few with everyone who got 49 and 48 points. So sometimes that's why you end up on the wait list and you don't understand why. It is because you may have met the minimum requirements, but they don't have space for you. And so they've given your space to someone who actually got more than the minimum. And that is how you are going to calculate your APS score. Now, if you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and make sure to leave any comments or questions below on the whole process. In the next video, I'm going to be covering NBTs or national benchmark tests, as this is a component of the whole application process. And a lot of people are nervous about these tests because they don't quite understand what is asked in them, how difficult they are, what is the format of the test. And so I'm going to run through that as well. And I'm going to provide you some amazing free resources. That's right, free resources that you can use to practice your NBTs before you go and write them when you apply to university. But that's it from me. I'll see you all again soon. Bye.